In 1991, I got my first phone call from Jones. Then another, and another. Every week since, without fail, I've had these phone calls with Jones. Not sure what to expect or what the topic will be, or even why I pick up. All I know for sure is every week, I get another phone call from Jones. What's going on, dude? Just got home from work, settling in for the Olympics. Because they're in Sochi, I have to stay away from all the news to see what's going on. At least I'm Sean White, so I'm looking forward to that. He looks Good or exactly bad. like James Hetfield from Metallica. And you know what I thought about that? Remember, because he's not, he's sharpened up, though. Because I remember years ago, like when he first came onto the scene, you're like, that is one ugly son of a bitch. But he's cleaned up now. He's not like a GQ model, but he's cleaned up all right, especially once he got rid of, once he got rid of the long hair. I was like, oh, that, that'll be the death of him, because at least with the long hair, it's a look, and it fits his lifestyle. Now he kind of looks like just a college grad. But he doesn't, he, he's cleaned up all right, though. He doesn't look as strange as I would have thought. Uh, yeah, I mean, I miss the flying tomato. I miss I would prefer thing. that. Yeah. I agree. I would prefer that. Now he's just a plain old, t- you know, tomato. Yeah. No, I, I would agree. I would prefer that he stayed with the long hair. But when you, then people say, oh, he chopped all his hair off. I was like, oh, God, he doesn't have to look Covered up. that off. Yeah. 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 Made a mistake. Although I guess he gave the hair to Lacks of Love, so I won't critique him on that. But then he kept it short. <laughs> Dude, how, how, you know, wouldn't you love to know that you're walking around with John White yeah. hair? That'd be cool if they, like, let you know, like, on the inside of the wig where the right. donor's name, man, so you could look him up. Right, yeah, no, that would be pretty cool. Be like... <laughs> we got we to gotta make this happen. Why is Locks of Love not, like, specially auctioning off celebrities right. here? And then you, like, hang on. Like, if you get, like, Yaramir Yager's hair from, like, 1991, you keep it. Right. I have not been in remission for 15 years, but I ain't giving this up. Yeah, this uh, this mullet's been in the Stanley Cup. I'm hanging on to this. <laughs> uh, that's brilliant. You know, my cousins, uh, my, uh, my, sorry, my nieces do that. I have a feeling my children will do it, at least the girls. And uh, so I don't think anyone's going to necessarily want their hair, although I really feel like, the, the the inside part should have the donor information. And, right. um, and you know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, I'm sure you can remain anonymous if you want, but wouldn't that be a cool little pen pally type of thing? So do you think, like, remember a couple months ago I did that? What, I, what the hell was it called? It was like Dress for Success, where they took in women's clothing, so women who are going through drug and alcohol programs or work programs, once they were ready for a job, then they could get, like, nice clothes to go interview. So yeah. I went to work there, and then this one woman showed up with Don Clark Netch's clothing. And it was like, wouldn't you want to know that? Like, even if you weren't even – I mean, even if it was, like, totally outdated. It was, like, from Woolworths in, like, 67. But along that same principle, like, you would want to know. Yeah. You know? That would yeah, be, I'd... like, you have Dave Grohl's hair or something. Well, plus it would give you a little bit of an extra spring in your step when you're going in for that interview. Yeah. As long as you're going to smell like, you know, uh, Paul Malls, okay. <laughs> you might as well get a little uh, jolt of energy out of it. Yeah. You may as well, you may as well know that you're wearing Don Clark Nitch's panties. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, that's gross. It started well, off so gets, nicely, making a lack of love, you know, suggestion, but now you're turning it into dark. I don't, I don't think that anybody has uttered the phrase Don Clark Netch's panties since the goodly Mr. Netch was around in the 70s. <laughs> Come on, Don, I want in on those panties. <laughs> oh, man, they reek of palm oils tonight. Palm oils and onions. <laughs> that's when I know it's good, and that's when I know it's showtime. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta let those babies breathe a little bit. Enough of the yeah. wool. All right. Um, uh, you know, I, uh, I even long for the days of, uh, of, uh, 
who's the who's the black skater that was fighting with the the, the oh Shawnee yeah. Davis? He's skating tonight. And who was the uh, the dude that, that, that they were fighting? And then even the white guy kind of went. It seemed like America was on the white guy's side, and then he kind of went a little too far, and it was like, dude, you're just being a dick now, man. Remember yeah. the whole controversy? Yeah, I, mean, I can't remember the guy, but I remember it. And I was at you for the most part. I thought Shawnee made a fool of himself a couple times in this whole in that whole exchange. But for the most part, like, I was on his side, like the – Whatever the hell the white guy's name was, I should look that up. White guy fight. I'm gonna Google white guy fights Shawnee Davis and see what I get. But I remember. I I want to say the whole riff was she's gonna race in the relays and then he decided not to do it because it was too close to his days when he was doing the individual race and the white guy was trying to make it, you know, say that he's not being patriotic or he's quitting on his team. And, and I thought that guy was, uh, yeah, was that guy, didn't they call guy a medal and he was going for five medals or something ridiculous? Something like that. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know, dude, guys, it's not uncommon. Like, in the Olympics, people do that all the time. They back out of races or they're not going to finish, you know, they're not going to compete in a certain distance or in a certain relay. And, you know what, dude? I mean, if the guy the guys won gold in '06, he won it in 2010. He's won world championships, so he knows what he's doing. I'm like, just back off, man. Yeah, I want to say that that was the end of the controversy of those two, you know, rivaling or having a rivalry that year. And at the, and that was where I went. Yeah, you're being a dude. Whatever his name is, Eric or whatever. And uh, but but the first part of the rivalry. It was different than what you're describing, and and in that it was a patriotic thing. I probably was like I was still a Republican back then. <laughs> so I was real, yes, post you know 9/11 Republicanism, you know mm-hmm. stand up, be jingoistic, and uh, and still caught up in that stupid fervor. So I was on his side, and then at the end of those Olympics, I, I thought that what you were describing occurred, and I went. Mm. You're being a dick, dude. Yeah, it was Chad Hendrick, I want to say, was the name. Why didn't they do a celebrity boxing match, a la George Zimmerman and DNX? Oh, man, that would have been. Can you imagine? Like, who would have gone to I wouldn't have gone to that just for fear of what would have happened within the crowd. Like, what would have happened in the stands would have been more troublesome than what would have happened in the ring. Is that why they canceled it, over security issues? Well, there, he, there was a lot of threats. There was a lot of threats to the event and to Zimmerman, and but I would have been—I wouldn't have worried about going after Zimmerman. I would have been worried about standing in the crowd, and then all of a sudden, you know, people would just be so ginned up, and I forget it, man. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that. Well, you know, I, on paper it looked like a mismatch, but that's that's probably just through the uh, filter of white guys are afraid of black guys, and they right. automatically go, oh. That guy, that that black rapper would kill that guy. But what if he did, you know, you know, get him, you know, full mount and, and Trayvon him all over again? That right. Was, yeah, that was the vision I had in my head where I was like, what if this Zitterman is just sure he's up against, he full mounts and he knows he's him? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that would have been, a, you know, a complete nightmare in and of itself, just having to see that all over. What was the positive, I guess, the positive is Zimmerman. Although I have to say, Zimmerman, isn't he Puerto Rican? Yeah, he's he's you know I never really understood why it, it was it was obviously the media uh, was making it a white black thing, but yeah, I I, I don't know behind the whole uh, the whole uh, fight night thing they were going to do like why would Zimmerman even agree to that? But clearly, I need and I mean I know this it seems it seems this seems like a, some people would say it's a stretch, but it almost makes me in my personal mind I'm like dude you're guilty. You are totally guilty because you are just not calming down and you're feeling totally bulletproof after this whole incident went down. Like you decided to play cop one night. That went poorly. It didn't turn out To say the least. Yeah. (laughs) To say the least, that went poorly. And then you go out and then you decide you're going to get into a dust up with your wife. And then after that, you decide you're going to take on a black rapper. And it's just like well, in honest, in all honesty, who the hell is hiring that guy? Don Clark Netch's clothes can't save that guy. 
<laughs> you get some gigs, man. You got to take whatever you can get. And if they're dangling, you know, fifty grand or a hundred grand in front of you, forget it. You got to do it, man. That guy's got to yeah, have enormous guess, legal bills. He's got to be in hock for for the rest of his life. I guess I haven't really considered that, but I just for me, I would worry about public safety issues of not wanting to be. I don't know, man. I, I, he could just. Like go to the, take lessons from Steve Bartman or something like lay low, or if you need to make a buck, find some kind of social angle of it of becoming a speaker for you know understanding peace or race oh, relations yeah. or something. Oh yeah, a lot of peace speaking gigs these days. Look, he needs Sean White's hair and Don Clark Netch's clothes, and that's it. He probably does need to move country. Yeah, man. I mean, he needs to. I mean, maybe he needs to go and be uh, Edward Snowden's roommate in uh, Vlad Vladivostok or wherever he's living. It ain't. It ain't gonna be well. Although I figured that that cat wouldn't. Well, maybe him and Casey Anthony and all these people are in some apartment, some wild and woolly apartment complex somewhere. Doing what? Well, I mean, just all these people that are going underground. Like, how do they stay out of the, you know, out of the public eye? Hey, oh. Zimmerman has it. I mean, literally, like, days after they, you know, he got acquitted, he was, like, in Texas for some reason, and he, like, saved somebody from, like, a burning car. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, I did forget that. On. But to me, it's like, okay, George, then build off of that. Let's build off of that. Let's not, let's not box the blacks. Let's save people out of cars. Let's work in an animal shelter. Let's be friends with the blacks. Let's not use the term blacks. Yeah. Step in the right direction. See, when I say that, I always get grief from people. Oh, you can't say that. Can't say what? Blacks. Like, in, that in and of itself is, is inherently racist. So that would be some people would think it was racist if I said, you know, to George Zimmerman, let's not box the blacks. Yes. People will yeah, label you racist. That's funny, though. And see, I said it in a very Seinfeld-esque tone. That's so true. Yeah. Oh, why aren't you hugging the blacks? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, I never understood the whole controversy of uh, when Mike North got in trouble for Hug a Black Guy Day. It's like, dude, it, A, it's funny, and B, what is wrong with encouraging that? Like, what well, is the, yeah, yeah, what's the horrible thing about that? Like, hey, it's Hug a Black Guy Day. If you see a black guy, go hug him. I mean, as long as you kind of warm them up to it and say, hey, I'm going to hug you, it's Hug a Black Guy Day. Of course, you just don't want to go and pressing everybody unannounced. Yeah, so but, you ask permission from the black. Yeah. yeah I think I a lot like of black guys would welcome. find it funny. A yeah, lot they, of black people would find it funny. They would, of course. I think you should try it tomorrow. I may. Mike had worn out his welcome by then. He was a bit of a psychopath that was on the heels of the Antonio Mora. Why doesn't he just wear a sombrero? It's hard to tell his ethnic ancestry. But I, didn't even, I didn't even have a problem with that one. Do you know how many – I'm 100% Irish. Do you know how many people tell me, like, I look Jewish or when my hair is kind of dried out and gets a little frizzy, they're like, you've got Jewish hair. You look Jewish. You sure you're not a Jew? I get that all the time. And I'm 100% Irish, and I don't get up in arms about it. I go, no, I'm not Jewish. I'm Irish. It's, it's problem solved. It's totally different. But it's I don't see, like, even with... degrees. Yeah, but I don't even see, like, with... Yeah, and with Mike North, like, saying... Anto Antonio Moore didn't look Hispanic. Like, I said, that was funny. Like, put a sombrero on a guy. I can't go he's Hispanic. Like, who cares? Like, that's bad? Come on. So what were you doing this weekend? Anything good? Uh, this past weekend? Yeah. It's all a blur now. I, it, it must have been f fabulous. I did fabulous things in fabulous places with fabulous people, I guess. Yeah, I do that too. More often than not, I can't ever remember what I did on the weekend. Yeah, yours is just a big blur of luge races. Right, right. Well, no, this weekend I, had the, uh, I did the pond hockey tournament. Oh, right on, right on. That's right. I forgot all about that. I, and, and you guys, uh, you guys were, uh, were well received up in Eagle River, Wisconsin. Yeah, we do pretty well up there because our team name is the Fibs. And we have the license plates on our jerseys, you know, and for whatever reason, people really react to that. Like even the Wisconsinites and the Michigan folk, 
they get a kick out of that. I don't know if it's the self-deprecating or, you know, it's a self-deprecating message or what, but they seem to dig it. So. We Have seem you guys to be thought about well selling Fibs jerseys at any point? No, it's not. The jerseys aren't that. See, every year they're very plain. Now, every year, the, we have the same jersey every year, and they're very plain. But we have, in the past, for the last couple of years, we've, been like, we've got to get better jerseys. And Sean Casey's brother is a good artist, and he drew this killer Abe Lincoln stick handling with a puck in the stovetop hat. And I was like, that is totally up. Yes. And then every year one goes, like, I'm going to put that together. I'm getting those jerseys. So I think next year I've just got to be the one that's like, guys, just give me, give me the design and let me work on it and let me get this thing going here. Because well, you should contact them tonight and start setting that up. Go to Threadless right and get that done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, but I would really want, like, a nice NHL-style jersey and to have the, the Abe Lincoln stitched up. It looks so cool. Like, the drawing looks so cool. If you could pull it off, it would be one of the baddest jerseys on the planet. And and how uh, – and, and so what, what was the record this week, this year? Uh, we did not do that well. We went one and two. But the two games we lost were close, two goal games. So in pond hockey, when you can score, like – twice in 15 seconds to lose by two is not that bad, but we went one and two. And so it, there's not, there aren't any, like, there's not a blue, blue line. There's not a red line. There's no, no. so you could cherry pick. Oh, you can do whatever you want. You can stand in front of the goal and just try to chuck pucks in, but people can have someone down there to stand in front of, defend the goal. You know, it's just your cover. There's just, the link is just surrounded in a snowbank. And, and much like the Olympics, is there like a, just a lot of just debauchery between players? Is there a lot of – are they dispensing condoms at a high rate like they are in Sochi this weekend? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Is it all condom-worthy what goes on there? No. But definitely I've noticed, and I'm not just saying this like to back up the dudes that I go up there with, but among the other teams that are up there, especially some of the older people, like the like married and kids, that sort of thing, it is kind of their time. Even if they don't physically do anything, you can tell they're trying to find an Eagle, Eagle River boyfriend or girlfriend. So you see that from time to time. I remember one time a year or two ago, I saw this one girl that I know from a co-ed team, and she was sitting there, and she was talking like, oh, my God, you know, it's so weird. I just look at this crowd, and I just think, I've been with the same guy for 24 years or whatever it was. And I was just like, no, oh, don't have this conversation with me like this. Well, that's what I'm saying all this. And this one girl I know, this one uh, lesbian girl, wanted to make out with me this weekend. So there's just this weird kind of vibe there. Wait, 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 wait. The lesbian wanted to make out with you? Yes, just because it's, it's that kind of energy among, like, almost the Olympic village where it's like, hey, man, we're all here, like, whatever. And I was talking to her, and she was just like, oh, yeah, I got a new girlfriend now. I cheated on my old girlfriend. I got this new girlfriend. And then as she's telling me, I was like, oh, okay, you know, because I knew the old girlfriend. I was like, oh, okay, okay. And she's like, hey, man, I'm just here to have a good time this week. And then you're looking so cute, Jonesy. You want to make out with you? You want to make out? And she just didn't put it out there. And I thought she was serious. And now a lot of times you can say that and you don't really mean it. Like when you put it out there like that, like, hey, let's make out. You're just kind of just being outrageous and joking around. But I kind of was like, I think she means it. And then, like, I'm in there too. She's like, no, seriously, Jonesy. <laughs> and I was just like... I go, oh, you've got this new relationship. I I just I feel weird. I wouldn't want to do that. You're happy. You know, it was just it was just kinda odd, like you get that weird Olympic village mentality. Yeah. Not among everybody, but you see it among a few people. And there was actually a few stories of so and so brought some guy back to the room, that kind of thing. You know, and I've gone uh trips past where you kind of knew something was going on or not with this team but other teams 
I've gone up and, you know, you go up to like a tournament in like northern Wisconsin and the guys want to hit the strip club or whatever and, oh, oh it's going to be horrible. Yeah, you see some things up. Well, I remember one time I was in this uh, strip club with another team and we were up in northern Wisconsin and it was like this little like shack strip club, like almost in a dude's house, but it was a strip club. And hey, the talent wasn't great. It was a lot of former, like, oh, you hey, check this lady out, former porn star, AVN, porn star of the year, 1986, you know, sexy Lexi. And, you know, some of these women out there doing their thing, past the born on date, you can see the C-section scars, like that kind of uh, thing. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. But I remember one time I'm in this strip club, and I, you know, I – I hate strip clubs. I mean, I hate yeah. them. Like, I remember uh, when we were out at the, for your bachelor party, we went out to Vegas. I remember I was watching, like... You were watching tennis, because it was like... No, I was day. like... Was I watching tennis? Maybe I was. You're watching, you know, Anna Kornikova. I was. I was watching women's tennis. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I just... Uh-huh. It's, the strip club scene is just not my scene. And I, to be honest with you, I think for most men, they don't want to say it because it's not masculine, but I think most men, the strip club isn't their scene. Oh, I don't know, but, man. I think it's I think it's at least 50 fit in the minority that we can't stand it. I mean, yeah, I but literally you, can't stand those places. Yeah, no, neither can I. Neither can I. Well, I at least would say the number is stronger than I think some people would think. I think some people go... 95% of guys have strip clubs, and it's nowhere near that. I think there's a strong percentage where it's like, dude, I don't know even deal. But anyway, we were in this strip club in northern Wisconsin, and there was this couple that was in there, and it was like a cheese curd eating, bratwurst eating couple. And they were in the back, and I don't know who got it, whether it was the man or the woman, but they got a lap dance. Like, they paid for the lap dance. So this woman is up there, and she's like, grinding away on both of them, right? Uh, and this stripper is, you know, doing her thing, grinding away on both of them, and then she starts taking off the wife's clothes. The wife's clothes. What? And I'm just like, what is this? This is so weird. So I'm looking ahead, and I'm just watching the show and having a beer and, like, counting the women's tennis was on TV, thankfully. So. No, there was no other TVs in this place. Otherwise, I would have watched it. So I'm just looking straight ahead, and then after a while, I'm just it's just killing me, like, back there. And I look over, and you can see the the wife's boobs are out, and her belly's out. She's had kids. You can tell. But, you know, she didn't look terrible, but she's, oh, she's not taking great care of herself. But it was just so weird just to see these floppy boobs out there and this hardened belly, and this stripper is on her, like, trying to make out with her, grinding on her, and she's kind of half uncomfortable but half smiling because she thinks her husband's happy for the first time in 10 years. And he's, like, watching it, like, rubbing on her shoulders, and he's got his hands down his pants. What? I was just like, what is this movie we were with? We're looking back at this, like, dude, this is like, it's not even like we're watching a threesome. We're watching a Midwestern porky couple getting a lap dance. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. It was just crazy. Like, you kept looking away, but then you kept looking back, and you're like, that's real. And, like, what? How did this woman feel? Like, she's in the middle of this club. Her belly's out. You know, it's... I'm sure you go to some of these strip clubs in the Kogo and they pick a girl, like the girlfriend out there, but she's kind of sexy and maybe it's a fantasy for her. This could not have been this woman's fantasy to be in front of, not in front of, but to be in a room full of people that could turn around and see her floppy boobs and her hardened belly while this other young, fitter woman is grinding away on her, trying to make out with her. Oh, my God. That's a horror show. Oh, it was a horror show. But you kept, it was like Walking Dead. You kept going back to it. You kept going back to it. <laughs> so that's actually the kind of thing I would almost check out more than like a hot chick. I'd rather watch a sporting event in a strip club, second place, watching some porky Wisconsinite getting a lap dance. <laughs> too funny. Just too funny. And then the guy with his hands down his own pants. Oh, it was great. 
It was great. <laughs> Dude, was I got to say, I'm a little bit chagrined that you didn't push the ball across the goal line with a lesbian who actually only wanted to be with you because she thought you were Jewish. Well, you know, the funny thing is, all the dudes that went up with me that weekend were like, dude, just for the story, why didn't you do it? And they were angry at me in the same way when I didn't, when that one, remember when that old Texas grandmother wanted me to come down and visit her after she met me? She wanted me to come stay with her for a couple weeks down in Texas. Yeah, yeah you did. You fucked that whole thing up. What's wrong with you, man? You could have been with Boy Friday for like six Fridays straight. You had nothing going on at the time either. I know, I know, as I've been a, told As that. opposed to now, when you have, you know... Like Moderate things going things. on. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I couldn't... Yeah, it's just not my thing, but it is... Uh, the hockey tournaments, they can have... They can have that Olympic Village vibe to it. And and was she was she kind of bull dyke or was she lipstick lesbian? Which I, I've never really gotten a grasp on that phrase. I'm assuming that's attractive lesbian. Right, yes, yes. No, she no, she no, she's cute. She's cute. I can't believe you. First of all, I don't know that I don't know that you're in a position to be turning down anyone making out with you. You might be right about that. If for no other reason than I'm living vicariously through you. And you know what? It's been a pretty dull 20 years for the living vicariously through Jones's <laughs> sex capade. I, I give you the brutal honesty. Yeah. It's been a real fucking dry run. And right when you're about to give me some 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 steak and some sizzle you I pull back it away you snatch shit away and all i get is sizzle you, all you get is a all you get is a bowl of quinoa <laughs> unbelievable man one of us yeah. has got to start pulling some some lesbian <laughs> and it ain't gonna be me so come on man start pulling your end of the bargain man definitely next year i'm on honest abe across your emblazoned across your chest right or I want a lesbian emblazoned emblazon across your chest. <laughs> right. One, of the, one of the two, dude. Well, I, you know what? I'm glad that you guys uh, didn't get into any bar brawls. Nobody got a bottle across the head. There were no religious towns that wanted you to, you know, get to the county line. No, it was yeah. all good. All right. What do you think of uh, of uh, the UFC prosecuting uh, pirate viewers? Yeah, I know, man. I saw I saw when you sent me that article about that. You know, and it's kind of funny, like, it would affect me watching the UFC because now that I don't pay for it, I don't know. Like, allegedly. Go, allegedly. Now that I allegedly don't pay for it, I don't know that I can go back to spending 50 bucks on that. You know, 50 bucks a pop. Because if you get, some nights we've watched it and we're like, oh, kind of a dud. And then you're, like, out 50 bucks. And then there's other nights, obviously, you go see it, and it's like, oh, my God, that was electric. But I don't know. I haven't you, felt that recently. And, boy, you know, even if you go to a bar, it's probably a $50 night on booze and right. jalapeno poppers. And, you know, and then, you know, right. you have lesbians running their fingers through your hair and the whole, you know, charade. Right, right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I have to think, just given the way the Internet is, there's just always going to be some other avenue that's out there. I don't know that you're going to be able to really close that off. Unless, unless like, for example, unless they do something where they're just more reasonable about it and they super serve the audience. Like, you know, you had, uh, what was, um, Napster, when you had Napster and when you had Bear Share with, like, music sharing, and the music community was up in arms about that. And all of a sudden, they decided to get a handle on it, play ball, and then you had iTunes, and then all of a sudden, you could get am albums for seven, eight, nine bucks or individual songs for a buck. And then people were like, eh, it's a buck, or eh, it's eight bucks. The sound quality is good. I can't, it downloads right away. It's more convenient. I'll go with that. Like, it almost, to me, if the UFC would really want to allegedly get me back because allegedly I've left as a paying customer. Well, I, they, I, to me, it would have to be like an event of $10 and you get, you get all the fights. Like they're just, they're streaming. Like if you and I were like, Hey, let's go to UFC.com. We know the fights are on live at this time, but we can start streaming it. Like we can buy into it 
at nine o'clock or seven o'clock and you pay 10 bucks and then you get all the fights. Cause how many times have you and I gotten the fight and we watched it and there were five duds and then you kind of thought, well, what were the other fights like? If the other fights were good, then maybe we wouldn't be so upset about that. But if all of a sudden it was like, hey man, it's only 10 bucks and you get all the fights. It's only 20 bucks and you get all the fights and they're streaming and you can go back to them or select them or whatever, where it was like, oh, why pirate it? Why have to try to put up with the signals or try to put up with the buffering when we can just pay it and then we get this awesome service? But for 50 yeah. bucks, they're not providing you with an awesome service. Yeah, I guess, you know, I have two thoughts. One is that I, I would be on board with seeing a delayed stream of it for a, for a reduced price. And, oh, if you want to see it live, you want to see it as it happens, you pay full full boat. If you want to see it the next day on demand or whatever, um, you pay 10 bucks. That I could get on board with that. Number two, with them, you know, shutting down a site and then threatening, which, you know, it sounds like legally that's going to be tough for them to do. But, oh, hey, yeah. just like the RIAA just went after, you know, a handful of people uh, for, for 700 grand and it sent a chilling effect across the whole landscape, uh, they don't have to go after all of the viewers, just a few. And even if it's an unwinnable case, it still is going to cost you a fortune to defend yourself. So, you know, that tactic of going after the viewers um, it is probably a sound one to send a chilling effect of nothing else. But number two, you know, as, a, as an Internet user and a viewer of things, I don't ever assume that I'm necessarily breaking the law. I always actually assume that, well, you know, boy, you know, these ISPs, they can turn on and turn off Spigot um, if they want. So anything that I'm seeing or accessing, I automatically assume that I'm seeing it and it's legal. I don't really assume that I'm breaking the law. Um, right. and, and if there are websites out there, like, I don't police myself, really. I don't really know. <laughs> I'm just looking at something, man. So if it's illegal, I don't understand why they just can't go right to the ISPs and say, hey, man, um, we're going to go after you if anything illegal goes through. So it, you've got to police this. Or there's got to be just a better way because I'm not going to police. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at is illegal. Right. I'm assuming that everything, I'm, if I'm seeing it, it's because somebody's allowing it and knows that somebody is – is our government or the NSA or somebody, somebody saying it's cool for this character to look at it. It feels like entrapment to me that, oh, okay, we're going to let this come, come through the ISP, and if you view it, good luck. If we ever audit you or if we ever, whatever, we find your IP on a list of IPs that stream this or whatever, how the hell do I know? Right. So just make it, I can't access it, man. I, cause I, I don't, you know, I'm not like encrypting my, my, I, I'm not using proxies. I'm not doing all this cause I don't think like a criminal. I don't think I'm right. up to criminality actually. If right, I can get right. to it, I feel like, and it's not like, you know, go to this Russian server, put in this secret code. I'm not doing, I'm just going on regular websites. It, right. I think so. I don't. I hope that I'm never. I hope I haven't transgressed any legal boundaries, man. That'd be a real crappy day to open up your mail and see that you're, you know, being sued for seven hundred grand over something that you streamed you didn't even know was illegal or something. You know. You know, it's kind of scary. I mean, not only that on the internet, it just seems more and more that things are kind of going that way. Whether it whether it is police cameras or whether it's monitoring different streams, whether it's sporting events or whether it's music or what have you. Like, it just seems more and more there is kind of this entrapment out there where you don't know when you're being watched, but you're supposed to, you're instinctively supposed to know what you're supposed to be doing and how you're supposed to behave. You don't know. You don't know whether there's a speed trap that's done by cameras or whether someone is following your stream or whether you're listening to an album or watching a sporting event. But the the lines are so blurred now. Well, okay, so there's a thing out there called the Tor browser. Right, that's what I was thinking of when I read that article. Like, wow, if I were to do anything like this, would I want to go? I mean, do I have to go on that Tor, Tor browser where they – what does it do? It doesn't – it doesn't give you a traceable IP address or something. Yeah, well, yeah, it's some sort of an encrypting, you know, and it's, you know, in theory when I've read about it, and I did start to, like, sign up to use it, and I stopped because I'm thinking, like, 
you know, this kind of has the feel of, like, this is a trap. Like, if I sign up for this, it's because I want to do something illegal. And meanwhile, I, I, you know, if I were to use something like that, it would be just in response to this whole NSA nonsense and Google, you know, and, and all and Facebook and all these companies that play loose and fast with your, you know, IP and your, your private information and all that. You know, it would just be in response to that. But I kind of felt like, eh, this kind of does feel like there's an illegality just by signing up for it. Like you're you're gonna do some some nasty things online. So right. I stopped, but and so I just I use the regular stuff because I want to just be like, yeah, I'm out in the open, man. I ain't encrypted or nothing. Like if I'm looking at it, I think that it's legal. <laughs> I'm not going to any like secret sites that that hide your tracks, and that feels creepy to me, man. So I just I wish that there was a little bit you know easier to navigate that stuff because I, I boy that's gotta be a horrible day to wake up and find out that you 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 fucked up and in your you you ended up on a list. Again, I'm assuming that, that what they're doing, they're looking at IPs and stuff. And I don't know how they prove that you did it. You know, even if your IP does show up, how do they prove that it was you and all that stuff? But you know, I guess the answer is, you know, if if you're on on to something and, and you have a, any doubts, you, you need to get off, but it seems like a lot of pressure, man. I just wish they would control it at the spigot then. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's what's so scary about it. And I was thinking, I thought of that website, that tour website of getting on there, and I thought, well, I guess I could do that. But then I was like, but then what am I opening myself up to? Like, I I instantly thought, like, why? I'm just going to watch a sporting event, and yet I'm going to this browser that, in my mind, at least from what I've read about Bitcoin or what have you, it's like, Sex trafficking and drug dealers, and I, you know, here I'm watching and like, you know, just here for a sporting event, little European soccer, move over. It just feels weird, so it is kind of uh, creepy. And then it was weird when I saw like the Bitcoin thing crashing out. Now, did you see that? Did you get a chance to see the article that I sent you about Bitcoin? Yeah, I did. I did, and it's, it's not a surprise to me that you know, six months ago, I was saying like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think this is a, this is a great idea, but um, but there's no way that the banks are going to allow this to no. live. Yeah. And, and sure enough, uh, and then you know, then the media started pushing the stories out there that oh, Bitcoin equals illegalities. If you're using Bitcoin, it's because you are a, a pedophile and a drug dealer. And and there's no in between. And so once I saw the media push toward that stuff, I went, mm, this isn't going to last very long. There's no way that yeah. they can allow this thing to crop up and, and eat into their profits. Meanwhile, the biggest money launderers in the world are, are J.P. Morgan Chase and all these other banks. And they, right. they, it's on record that they're they're funneling the, you know drug money. <laughs> so oh, it's okay for you guys to be part of the drug uh, laundering business, uh, but not uh, Bitcoin. Okay, I get it. Whatever, it's your right. Like, unfortunately, it's your rules that we've all been abiding by for a century. So I'm not going to buck, buck it. I mean, when I first heard about Bitcoin, I didn't get it. And then as I came to understand a little bit more, I was just like, oh, there's no way they're going to pull this off. Because what's going to stop companies – or I'm sorry, what's going to stop governments from going to companies and saying, look – Bitcoin is illegal, just like Russia did. I was surprised at the number of companies, though, that already accepted Bitcoin. Like, you could buy a Subway sandwich with Bitcoin. I was shocked by that. Ooh, was why like, would you want to using do that? Yeah, who wants to eat a sandwich <laughs> at any price? Right. I guess. However, I was surprised. Like, wow, Subway takes Bitcoin. That's crazy. But whole, like, underworld of the Internet, I just can't really – not that Bitcoin was – one to one walking with the underworld. However, you know, I that those stories did get in my head of reading Bitcoin and Bitcoin is for drug dealers and you can, you know, pay for sex acts on here. And because when I went on, when I was thinking about that tour website, and I was like, oh, well, I guess I could, if I wanted to go check out websites to watch sporting events, I could go through this browser. I didn't know you had to sign up though to get on that browser. Is that true? Well, there was some sort of a process, and and I, I, I again I started it, whatever that means. I can't remember now how far I went into it, and I thought, well, you know, if there was, a, a, if there is a, an entrapment thing, for example, there's a site called Backpages.com, which I guess is like where you hook up with escorts, 
and they okay. bust prostitutes all the time on Backpages.com. It's like, you know, the way that Craigslist used to be, uh, or maybe still is, but it seemed like years ago it was like, you know, prostitutes are using Craigslist, and it's, you know, the sheriffs right. are starting to crack down on it and all this stuff. And meanwhile, I'm always thinking, like, well, I, I, it seems if Backpages.com or Craigslist or whatever is uh, where illegalities are happening, it seems like that should be a pretty easy thing to shut off. I don't understand why are you making it available to us then if if we're going to be breaking laws by accessing this data or or these images or whatever I, I just turn it off in this country you can shut off you know China and Google had partnered to, to to censor tons of keywords and phrases and content and images and everything so right you got, and they're doing that in America so uh, you know just make shut down back pages then. I've never even gone to it because I don't even want that in my history. But, you know, every time I read that, I think, like, well, what is this site being used for outside of prostitution? Is it used for anything else? Are people selling, you know, dressers and stuff on it like they do on Craigslist? Because it seems like the only time I read about it is when, you know, pimps are being busted using it. Right. So now you were down. But you were saying, though, that there are keywords and phrases that are being censored out in the United States. Do you have any idea what those are? Oh, well, I, all I mean is that your searches are, are absolutely, you know, can be filtered and steered and shaped. And, and your, okay. you know, like Google uses like 57 different markers to determine what searches you see. So, like, if I Google a phrase and you Google a phrase, the results that I get will be different from the results you get based on the machine I'm using based on my history, based on the metadata that I have collected already, you know, the, the, the user experience is, is tailored for, for everyone differently. And you can try that yourself, like, you know, with someone else, get on the phone with them and, and, and say, all right, Google um, Bex and tell me what the first three sites are. And, and you'll see that there's different results, even though you're both searching the same phrase. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, okay, so I'm a Mac user and I'm using, you know, an iOS device and I'm, I'm in this IP, you know, geo, geographic zone and uh, my history includes metadata that shows that I've searched for, for X and Y and Z. So I get different results than you using a PC, you know, in Austin, Texas with different search terms in your history. So it's, I mean, it makes um, sense. I never really thought of anyone doing that. Yeah, that and it makes honestly, sense. Like, yeah, that's like it's somewhat new to me as well over the last, you know, year. I, that kind of stuff is now on my radar. And, again, okay, so are they sending us different – but, you know, but, again, like, you – shit, watch the BBC. Watch Al Jazeera and see what they're talking about versus what, like, Matt Lauer is talking about. Totally different stuff. You know, and like, you know, overseas, you know, uh, Russian TV. Like, okay, so I guess Russian TV commentators openly root against U.S. athletes during their coverage of the Olympics. Oh, really? Yeah, like if, if, if a skater falls, they kind of cheer and stuff. <laughs> like, you're real, overt, real overtly anti American. Where'd you see this? Uh, the American media told me. I, you know what? I'm trying to remember now. Okay, okay. And well, like, no, I'd like to look it up. One of the sites that I watch is Russia Today. Yes, and, I, uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, so, there's then, some angry chick on there. What's her name? Oh, I don't know. They have a lot of British-sounding presenters and stuff on yeah. the TV channel. And um, and so, I, you know, on Facebook, they're in my feed or whatever. And uh, and when Russia won gold, the first gold they won the other day, like Russia Today went crazy. And, and granted, I know that that's a, a propagandist, you know, equivalent to, like, Radio Fee America and stuff. Right. It's funded by Moscow to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. I understand that it's there to, to be a propagandist for, for Russia. Um, some of the stories I dig, some of the angles I like, um, but by and large, I, everything they say, I take with a grain of salt. However, everything that the Today Show I say, I see, I take with a grain of salt, too, because they've got an agenda they're working, too. Yeah, and I, I believe you. I don't, I don't doubt what you're saying or question it. It's just it's funny to me that or where I'm – what I think about when I hear those things is it's almost what's like, uh, and why pay attention to any of it? It's just fatiguing to me that, that I would have to watch 
three or four different news sources to get a sense of what was going on. Like, this is really, it's so funny. There's so much information out there and so many ways to manipulate it. It's really more, It's more, this is more of a confusing time than ever. Yeah, the more like, information you're shown, the less reliable it all seems, actually. I don't right. think most and people look at it through that lens, though. Whatever they see on, you know, uh, on NBC, they take it, oh, well, that must be the way it is. Like, as if it, you know, is is Edward R. Murrow and, and Grant, Walter Cronkite type stuff. Meanwhile, those guys were working an Agenda 2. No, I nobody understand. Nobody believed it or, or knew it, or and I don't think that most people even are thinking about that stuff. Yeah, it's just, and I, no, I understand that, but at the same point, it's really become so fatiguing to me that I really do find myself wanting to shut down from that information because it's not getting me anywhere. I don't see the value in taking it all in. It's just this intense noise. And, it, and to a different degree, but maybe somewhat related, when you were telling me, what was it, last weekend, you were telling me, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, when we were watching that UFC fight fully paid for on your cable box, we were you were telling me that you had read this article and then you sent me the article about hertz 440 hertz is what most music and sound is recorded at and that there are scientists out there that say that's intense too not too intense for your brain yeah that the uh, that the earth actually you know has a has a frequency of 432 hertz yes would would be more in line with the frequency of nature, right? And and therefore will put you in a more homeostatic state of right. balance than 440 does, right? And it's funny because then what I did, like after I'm like really, so I read that article and then on YouTube and started like looking around on the internet and all that, and it was funny. Like I started playing things. And I don't know if it was just because I read it, but they had like there was a Beatles track. That was recorded at 4:32, uh, uh, like California Cation, California Cation by Red Hot Chili Peppers. I just started listening to different songs that were like 4:32, and for whatever reason, I sat there. Maybe it was just because I read the article, but I was like, I can feel this music in my chest. I do feel more at peace listening to this, and I feel that way now about like consuming news. I just have a tough time trying to dip my toe back into it. And it's not because I have all this other cool party stuff going on and I just want to be broed out 24 seven, but it's like, Oh, well, who am I listening to? Like, you can tell me like Fox news are all liars, but that doesn't make me want to tune into CNN. It's not like I believe what they're saying or Russia today. And it's like, I'm looking for that 432 wavelength with everything. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, know, I got to say, I at least like the fact that Fox News is, you know, even though they still kind of wink and nod uh, that they're they're fair and balanced. Fair and balanced. Yeah. I like that it's like, yeah, this is if you're a Republican or conservative or whatever or anti-liberal or anti-progressive, this is the news for you, and it's just out there. And MSNBC is the antithesis of that. So you know, right state, you know, red state, whatever. This is for you. Uh, right. We're out there with it, and these 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 companies and these these organizations where it's it's still seemingly ambiguous. That I feel like is more disingenuous. I kind of like that Russia today. I know, oh, this is just propaganda for Russia. I'll take it at face value. I look at it through that filter. Fox News, MSNBC. I look at it through that filter. It's those. It's the NBCs of the world that really concern me, or right. even Google and even Facebook. You feel like you're getting a view of the world that's impartial, but it's anything but impartial. And the fact that they're not out there with it makes it feel really deceitful. And you know, it's like they're the Tor browsers. If you ask me. It's like, man, you guys are the ones who are really snakes in the woods, man. Where you're giving me, right. a, you make me feel like I'm shrouding myself in a veil of of, of secrecy or or impartiality or whatever. But I'm I'm definitely not. You're working an agenda on me, and you're just you're not even straight up with it. Right, and I agree with you a hundred percent on that. I would rather take in a Russia Today and then the Fox News channel where you know the angle. That would be my preferred method of taking the news, given what the choices are. But 
even given that those are the choices, I just have, it's like, oh, I don't even want to, it just doesn't seem like there's anything for me to draw from it. Like, what really am I going to get out of those avenues? Even at least they're being honest with me, but I still feel like I'm getting an honest nothing. I'd rather get an honest nothing than a deceitful nothing. But it's still nothing to me at the end of the day. You don't get any value from it. It, it, it makes you feel unsettled. I think that's the, uh, the 440. Yes. The, un- 40, the 440 hertz is, it creates chaos and unsettled and anxiety. And yes, and to me, honestly, I really feel the more, when you're like going on a right path, and it's not just like an emotional right path, but in terms of even getting in the right information, learning something properly, typically you're on a, a settled path. You're in a comfortable state. You know, you're not learning. You're not taking in information at this harried, panicked level. So it almost seems to me like, like that's even like the goal of like how you're supposed to be living your life is that you're it, more often than not, you're in a balanced, calm state. So when I'm taking in information but in that balanced, calm state, to me, it seems like it's false information or information that I don't want. If it's not shedding light and it, I'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel or feeling good about the information that I'm taking in, like even when I was learning about Bitcoin, there's all sorts of propaganda around that, but just understanding like, oh, this is how Bitcoin works. I'm getting a better understanding of it. It felt good learning it. And in the same way when I was reading those three best books, Warren Buffett's three best books by Preston Pish, it was like, okay, I really am getting an understanding of how the economy works, how markets work, how you know, how companies really make themselves available to the public and you know, getting down the terminology. I enjoyed reading that information. It felt good taking it in. Now, if you just slap me down in front of the TV and made me watch uh, Jim Cramer, uh, I that feels like false information. I don't want that information. It feels false or it doesn't feel as though it's purposeful. You know what I mean? So that's why I find it, kind of find myself more and more checking taking in news or where I, I don't know where to take it in from because I just I don't have that settled feeling as I'm taking it in and if I don't have a settled feeling as I learn something to me I just I'm now processing that as either false or useless information or needless information yeah yeah there's there's some uh, there's some validity to at least WWE being like yeah this is just a show we're not even pretending like it's real like we kind of you know, tried to do in the 80s and 70s right. and 60s. Now everyone's in. You're in on the gag. We think enough of you as our consumer to let you know that we know it's a gag, you know it's a gag. We're all in on this goop together, so take it for what it's worth. It's just entertainment. Right, right. And that's why when sports lets you down, you find out it was rigged or there was a, a dirty ref or somebody was on PEDs and the other guy wasn't, or whatever, you, you feel so cheated and so like, well, fuck, I can't trust anybody, man. I just want That's to trust true. what I'm seeing, man. I just give me the 440. Yeah. No, the, I'm sorry, you want the, the 432, 432 you want, man. Yeah, I want the 432. Right, see, they brainwashed me into wanting the 440. I don't want the 440. I want the 432. Yeah, and then I went out and I got an app, but then all of a sudden as they was – I, there's this app that is supposed to convert everything to 432. And then as it was, I was trying to do that onto my iPad, my laptop ran out of juice and my cord is back at my sister's house. So I'm even being shut off from trying to convert things to 432. But I'm, I'm digging the 432, man. That was some, there's something to that there. We have to do the something Pepsi challenge where we get you in the studio totally soundproof, no distractions, and I play, uh, you know, 20 tracks, and I don't yeah. tell you which is which, and you, yeah. you, you write down, we got to do the, the sound Pepsi challenge with you. Yes, I would do that. I would love to do that, actually. Set it up. Yeah, I will, man. Well, you've got the studio, so you let me know when you're available. 
That's fine. It'll be all different genres. It'll be all, we'll have to really try to scientifically get to the bottom of this. And, and, and shit, I would love to do, like, it, I would like to really scientifically do it with an EKG and brain waves and everything and, and really prove for all. Does it have cold water or is this just more pablum to sell you an app or something, you know? Right. Well, do we know someone that can do the brain, uh, uh, do the EKG stuff? I don't know. I'll, be, I'll get on my trusty core browser tonight and search around. Maybe on backpages.com. I'll Please find me. someone. It'll be a trap. Yeah, I would I would do that. I would love to check that out. That would be interesting. All right. Well, we'll set that up, dude, because I want to yeah, know. Let's... I want to know, and I would trust your, uh, you know, kind of zenness to give me the straight dope on that. With more than information, I'm seeking zen. <laughs> right. Homeostasis, zen... dude. Because Zen is information. That's the word. That's the word. Homeostasis. That's what I'm looking for. In everything, balance. Oh, I feel like a breakthrough has been had, and uh, and I, I can't thank you enough for helping me uh, in whatever way. In whatever way you just helped me. Enjoy your evening, sir. And if uh, if any lipstick lesbians happen your way, g- g- give me a smooch, would you? I will. I'll go in for my 432 kill. Just one. Just one 432. Soul kiss of a lesbian is all I'm asking for, dude. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. All right, man. I'll see you, Mike. See ya. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time.